This is Ms. Wilson, and in this video we'll be doing some review problems kind of in a fast and furious manner on this last day right before um, we get ready for our final exam in pre-calculus. We're here in the uh, wonderful state of North Carolina, and so this is the North Carolina released items, one of them from a long time ago, um, and we're going to look at these pretty quickly. If you're watching this at home and you have this packet or have access to it or just look at the problems before you look at the answers. Just pause and try to think about how you would work it out because you want to try it. Your strategy may be different than mine, but then you'll still be able to check your answers afterwards. So in this problem, we have a sequence that is shown and you are asked how many terms of the sequence must be added together for the sum to equal 3,280. Now you do have a handy dandy um, a formula sheet that you'll be able to use on the test and unfortunately I don't have a copy of it here um, but there is a formula that you can use that formula is right there I took a copy of it from okay. that uh, formula sheet that you have and um, copy the particular formula that you would want for this now the reason that you know you want this formula is because it's under geometric sequences and you can tell this is geometric because we're multiplying by 3 every time. When we're multiplying by, uh, when we look at a particular sequence and we see that we're multiplying by something, we know it's geometric. Now R is that common ratio. We're multiplying by 3 here, so R does not equal 1. And since we're talking about a sum of this sequence, that's what this means. The sum of a certain number of this sequence is in is going to help us, um, this formula will help us find it. But I wouldn't even use the formula because it's only asking you to um, add up 6, 7, 8, or 9 of the terms. So I would take my handy dandy calculator and first I would add up 6 of the terms and I would get 364. And I'd say that's not it. Then I would add another term this, um, the seventh term would be 3 to the 6th power, and I'd get 1,093, and I'd say that's not it. And then I'd add this term and get 3,280. And the number of terms of this sequence that I would be using is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I started with 6 because that's the lowest possible number of, of terms that I could use. And then 7, and then 8, and my answer is 8. Like I said, this is fast and furious, so if you want to work on the problem before you see the solution, you're going to have to pause it as soon as you see the problem, because I want to get through as much as we can today. This, um, I may not put all the questions on this video, but you'll know that by the time we get to the end. So let's go to the next question. Pause here if you don't want to hear me talking about it. The first term of an infinite geometric sequence is 2. Now, in this review, there's several questions about sequences. Don't know if you'll have that many on your exam, but it'd probably be pretty nice if you did. The sum of the sequence is 6. What is the common ratio of the sequence? Now, in this problem, I would definitely look at my answer choices to see what I had to choose from, because depending on what I have to choose from, I may need to use a particular formula or whatever. But when I look at my answer choices, each one of them... Um, well, it starts out with two fractions that are less than zero, um, less than one. They all look like fractions, of course, but two of them are less than one, so there's one particular formula to use for that on your answer sheet or your formula sheet. This 3 over 3 is equal to 1, and 4 over 3 is greater than 1. So there's, you know, it's a different formula. But I would start off with the first one, and then... I wouldn't even really start off with the first one to kind of check the, the the formula that you need for those. There's the formula that you would use if the ratio is less than 1. Now, what I would do with these other ones with C and D, when, when the ratio is 1, I would think about, well, that means the number is never going to change. And so there, there, there can't, if the first number is 2, that means every number after that would be 2 because I'm multiplying by 1. And so this is not an infinite sequence that's ever going to add up to 6, so I would eliminate it. And I would do the same thing with 4 thirds because that's 
series, that sequence is just going to keep getting larger and larger and larger. So it's, it just doesn't make sense that I would be able to start off with two and have a lot of numbers that somehow infinitely I could add them up and get six. So I would automatically eliminate C and D. And then I would use this formula, make the substitution in my handy dandy calculator, and determine that two thirds is the correct answer. Next question. Next question, we've got another one of those series. So which is true of the series shown below? Um, here's this series, and if I look at it, I can see that it starts off with pi, and then there's pi in every single one of them. But I can see what's happening here. To go from the first and to the second, it looks like we multiplied by three-fourths. And if that's a number that I think means a lot, then I'm going to look at the second one or the third number to see did I multiply by three-fourths again. And with nine-sixteenths, I'm like, yes. So now I know that my common ratio is three-fourths. And I know that this is geometric. Um, just because you see fractions, be careful about making blanket statements like, Oh, if I see fractions, it's always going to be geometric. Um, usually, but not always. You might not see enough of a sequence to determine that. But if you can actually multiply by something um, to see what it goes towards or what, what's happening as it increases, then you'll know um, what to choose. Now, you look at your answer choices, and you've got three answer choices that say that this series converges. And you've got one answer choice that says that it diverges. Divergence only happens when R is greater than or equal to 1. If, it is, if R is less than 1, it's going to converge to some value. And what it will converge to is that magical infinite sum. Um, and it's the same uh, formula that we've used. And the reason that this works is because eventually the denominator here, when we keep on multiplying a fraction by three-fourths and we keep on and we keep on doing that, eventually this number becomes so incredibly small that it doesn't make any kind of impact on the sum of the series. Like it's almost like adding zero, the number gets so incredibly small because every one of these numbers is smaller than the one before it. And so then when I decide which one of these formulas to use, I just plug that into my handy dandy calculator. And because my calculator um, chews up pi and spits out something else, then I have to check to see um, either mentally or I can check just to be sure with my calculator that it equals four pi. All right, let's go on to number 12. Number 12, Karen recursively generated a sequence of five positive integers by starting with a positive integer, a sub 1. There's some clues in there that kind of give you an idea of what the notation means. That the first number in a sequence is, is designated by a sub 1 or n sub 1, saying that this is the first term in the sequence. And then she applied this recursive formula. She's got this formula that she's using to generate all the terms, a sub n, like the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. And then they ask you a question, okay, so if the value of a sub 5 was 407, what was the value of Karen's starting term, term a sub 1? Now what you could do is you could start off with one of these being, saying, Maybe it's 366. Maybe 366 was her first term. Well, if it was her first term, then that means that for the second term, if this was a sub 1, the second term would use this formula. And it used that formula, and it would be 366 plus 3 times 2, because now we're working on the second term, minus 1. So at that point, once I figured out what I was doing, I would use my calculator. And in my calculator, I've kind of done it two ways here. So I want you not to worry about this one yet. Because on this one, I was kind of working backwards. So I want you to look at this one. Well, that's not true, because I erased the one where I worked backwards. If 366 was the first term, then the second term is going to be 366 
plus 3 times 2, because it's the second term, minus 1. Just using the formula. So the second term would be 371. Then I want to find out the third term. The third term would be that 371 plus 3 times 3 minus 1, or 379. The fourth term would be that third term plus 3 times 4 minus 1, or 390. I made a mistake here because for some reason I did a parentheses instead of a minus 1, so we're going to ignore that line. But then I have 390 because I want to find the fifth term, 390 plus 3 times 5 minus 1, and that gave me 404. Now, it did not give me what the value of a sub 5 was in the problem, which is 407. But since it gave me 404, I thought, well, maybe with that 366, maybe I'm just 3 off. So then I tried the 369 next because it was 3 off from the 366. And you can see I went through the same process, and D is the correct answer. And we're moving on. This may be the last one we put on this video. This problem says, what is the distance between the y-intercepts of the graph of x plus 8 equals 2 times y plus 3 squared? Well, the way I would solve this problem, you may do something else. But I would look at it and say, okay, when does this have y-intercepts? Y-intercepts happen when x is 0. Now, before I go on, some of these problems seem very much like a lower-level math to me. Doesn't seem like a lot of pre-calculus, but if you remember, back in the beginning of the course, we did some review <coughs> of other courses, so we did have some things like this. Um, there are some things that you're expected to kind of remember by the time you get to the end of a pre-calculus course. So if I were doing this, I would probably set it up and solve it because it's really kind of difficult to put y plus 3 squared in the calculator. So it's not like I can really, I'm, I could do something so that I can graph this, um, but it's really not so difficult to graph or to solve this problem. So I want to see if x is 0. When x is 0, that's when y-intercepts happen. So what happens to this equation when x is 0? So I put this in there and make it 8 equals 2 times y plus 3 squared. Solving this problem, the first step is to divide both sides of it by 2 because I want to isolate this y. I want to get y all by itself because I'm looking for these y-intercepts. And I'm going to look for the distance between the two. So if I divide both sides by 2, I get 4 equals y plus 3 squared. Now, before I can do anything else, I've got to take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of the y plus 3 squared, we end up with y plus 3. When we take the square root of 4, that could be 2, or it could be negative 2. And that's where you see the plus or minus 2 come into play. And we've got this big clue in the problem that we're going to have two answers with that s on the end of the y-intercept. So there are two y-intercepts here. Plus, I should be expecting this to be some kind of a conic shape because of the y squared. I'm, I'm expecting it to be something different that I haven't seen before. So now I've got one more thing to do, and that's subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. So now I have negative 3 plus or minus 2 equals y. So it could be that y is negative 3 plus 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. It could be that y is negative 3 minus 2. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. The distance between those two numbers is 4. The distance between any two numbers is the highest number minus the lowest number. So I could do negative 1 minus negative 5. But if I simply just um, think about the number line, I've got a number line, here's the y-axis in whatever coordinates I'm using. If y is, oh, that's really the wrong place to go, y could be negative 5. y could be negative 1. 
and the distance between those two numbers is 4. <coughs> and next. Actually, I said this was going to be the last one for this video, so that's what we're going to do. That's going to be all I have to say about that, and the next video will start with number 14.